much for coming out to our uh, last night of vacation Bible school. We're going to start tonight out the same way we've started every night of Bible school out. We're going to start with our pledges. Our first one's going to be our pledge to the American flag. We're standing, we salute, and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. God bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the night with the light from above. And now we're going to do our pledge to the Christian flag. Salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands. One Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty to all who believe. I am on the battlefield for my Lord. Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. we're going to do our pledge to the Bible. Salute and pledge. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I will make it a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and will hide its words in my heart that I might not sin against God. The B-I-B-L-E, yes, that's the book for me. I stand upon the Word of God, the B-I-B-L-E, the Bible. All right, you all can be seated. Thank you all so much. What a lovely group of Vacation Bible School students we have here tonight. Am I right? Now we're gonna do things a little bit different than we have the rest of this week. Um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open us up and I'm gonna say once again, thank you to the students who have been courteous and have been nice and have listened to your teachers all week long. Thank you all for doing that. I also wanna say thank you to the teachers and thank you to the parents who brought your kids out to this. It's a, I know it's been a wonderful blessing to these kids and I know from my experience, it's been a blessing to be able to teach these kids. I told my kids right before we came out to march in, had a little heart to heart, I told them how much, how much of a blessing it's been to be able to teach them this week. And teachers, we can finally get some rest tonight. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but what I would like to do is I would, I'd like to open us up in prayer, and then we're going to do some singing. We have a bunch of different choirs from the littlest to the oldest. Uh, we're going to do some singing, there's going to be some preaching, and most importantly, there's going to be some eating. No, I'm just kidding. Preaching part's the most important part. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to open us up in prayer, and then I'm going to go ahead and say a blessing on the food. That way, when we get out there, we can go ahead and hurry up and dive into it, okay? So let's open, us, let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I love you, and I thank you so much for the week that you've given us, Lord. I thank you for the uh, numerous amount of souls that have been saved through this, Lord. And Lord God, I ask that even though it's a vacation Bible school, and like I've said before, many people think it's about water guns and puppet shows, Lord, but it's about you, and it's about us getting close to you and your son, Jesus Christ, Lord. And I know tonight's not over with yet, Lord God. I know that there's some people here, Lord God, that need your son, Jesus Christ, as their personal Savior. And Lord, I ask that you take away the fear, Lord, take away the, uh, the, the, just the, the scared feelings that they may have when it comes up to walking down and accepting your son Jesus, Lord God. I ask that you would just help move us, Lord God, that your Holy Spirit come down 
And Lord God, I just thank you once again for what you've done. I ask that you bless the food, Lord God. Bless the hands that prepared it. Help it, Lord God, to be a nourishment to our bodies. Lord, once again, I ask that you continue to guide us in your will, Lord, and be with us as we come together to praise and to worship you, Lord. And I ask these things all in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. And I believe we're going to start with the littlest choir, correct? So while the littlest choir is coming up, I'm going to ask some of the older ones. I'm going to ask um, some one of these students what your favorite thing about Vacation Bible School was this week, okay? Let me get you, I'm going to get you talking the microphone, big guy, so everyone can hear what you have to say. I'm learning about the Bible. Amen, amen. Learning about the Bible. Someone at Logan. About people getting saved. About people getting saved. Amen. Let's get hands for that. Getting closer to God. Getting closer to God. We beat the girls. We beat the girls. There's, there's one in every group. Love it. Love it. Let me come over here while they're getting set up. Now, not everyone jump up at once. I've got plenty of time I'm going to fill up in between choir switches. Go ahead. Learning about Jesus. Learning about Jesus. And I want to just say once again that that is the biggest thing. That's our biggest concern here at Vacation Bible School. It's, it is fun. It is. It's nice to be silly sometimes. But the most important thing is that we are learning about Jesus. And I believe with that being said, this fine looking tiny choir is about to do their thing. <laughs>
There's always one in the group that's a little more excited about it than the other. <laughs> hey, it says to make a joyful noise. If that's screaming that you're gonna let your light shine or singing, I mean, one way or another, he was doing his part. That was awesome, I appreciate that. Let me ask you all a question. How many of you kids this week learned about letting your light shine? <laughs> See, it, it's funny when all the parents show up, because normally I ask a question, you scream and woo! So let's try that again. How many of you kids this week learned about letting your light shine? <laughs> you all are so embarrassed that your parents are gonna hear you hoot and holler in church. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's, I'm gonna do it one more time. How many of you all learned about letting your light shine this week? <laughs> there we go, that's awesome.
Are my people ready? I think I've seen them. Is, is, that, a, is that a yeah? Okay, everyone, guys, remember, remember about these people. Sometimes they get nervous. So we're gonna do it the way we always do, very quietly. On the count of three, we're gonna say lights, camera, action, okay? On the count of three, really quiet, no screaming, really quiet. Okay, ready? One, two, three. Camera! No, 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 Ready? One, two, three. Lights, camera. Second Samuel chapter 18. Now, we've had a lot of fun. Um, how many of y'all had fun this week? Right? A lot of good times, a lot of fun. Right? 
right, now, now look over here at me real quick. I want everybody looking at me, all right? We've had a lot of fun, but we've come to a very important time right now. Perhaps the most important time of this entire week, okay? So what I need from you guys right here, you guys over here, is I need you to pay attention for just a few moments, okay? This is very serious, very serious time. Uh, the Lord has burdened me, burdened me deeply with a message for you kids today and for the adults that are here tonight that um, I, I'm heartbroken over, I'll be honest with you. Now, usually I preach kind of a, a fluffy and a fun vacation Bible school uh, message, but tonight is not going to be like that. This is going to be a very, very serious message, okay? So I don't want anybody playing around. I want everybody paying attention. Because what I've got to tell you tonight is so important, it could literally mean the difference between life and death for you. Not just on this earth, but in eternity. And God has given me a, a message tonight that I believe if there's ever been a time to preach it to you guys and to the parents that are here tonight, this is the time. And I believe that throughout what we've already been experiencing here tonight, that I believe the devil is trying to pull against this tonight because he knows what's coming. And so I just need you guys to help me out. And I need you parents that are Christians here tonight to begin to pray here in just a few moments. I'm going to open in prayer. I'm going to read a scripture that kind of goes along with the theme that we've had this week. But I need you, I need you to really dial it in for me, okay? Can y'all do that for me? All right. Uh, teenagers, no, no messing around back there. No phones. I, I need you to dial it in because I'm telling you, this is so important. I cannot possibly express to you how important this is tonight. So let's pray. Help me pray tonight. Lord God, help us as only you can, Father, to be able to hear from you. And Father, we know the devil works against a message like I'm getting ready to preach. We know there's always going to be an undertow of demonic spirits, but we know there is a God that is greater. And Father, we just want to pray in Jesus' name right now that you would bind every unclean spirit that would try to hinder this message. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ and by his precious blood that you would command every unclean spirit to be gone from here. Father God, may there be an outpouring of your Holy Ghost, Lord, that would walk up and down every aisle and touch every heart and blanket every individual here tonight. Father, you love these people. You care about these people. And I know you're, Lord, tired of seeing drugs and drinking and and devil, devilment and all these things, dragging these kids out and into uh, lives that are heartbreaking and the parents being drugged into these things that are heartbreaking, Lord God. And Father, you want to save tonight. You want to help tonight. And God, we need you, Lord, to reach down and touch this service. Touch these kids. Touch these parents tonight. Touch this preacher. Empty me of myself and fill me with your Holy Spirit. Help me, God, to preach tonight. And I ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. 2 Samuel chapter 18 and verse 8 is a very strange passage of Scripture. And I want you to listen very carefully. This week we've had a, a thought or a theme going on uh, that dealt with the jungle and uh, kind of things like that. And, and I, I want to work off of that thought uh, that uh, we've had going throughout the week, uh, jungle adventure and, and things like that. And I want you to listen to this passage of Scripture. The Bible says in verse 8, For the battle was there scattered over the face of all the country. Now listen carefully. And the wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. The wood devoured more people that day than the sword devoured. Let me give you a little background here. David and his mighty men had been approached by an enormous army. An army so incredible and so powerful that everybody thought all hope was lost. David and his mighty men met this army that had come out against them to destroy them, their homes, their families, and everybody associated with them, including their children. And in this big open field, they met them head on that day, if for nothing else, out of desperation. And they began to battle that great army there that day. And David and his mighty men had such a touch of God on them and such a power of God on them that whenever they began to engage this great army in battle, even though they were outnumbered and even though they were outmanned and even though they were outgunned, they were immediately, efficiently, and quickly able to kill over 20,000 enemy soldiers in that open field. 
They were so shocked that this small army of David and his mighty men was able to dismantle this great army that they began to run for their lives. They began to run towards a place called the Wood of Ephraim. The Wood of Ephraim was like a jungle. It was a thick, dark, dense jungle. They thought if we could just make it into that jungle, if we could just get into that jungle, we're going to be all right. We'll be able to hide and David and his mighty men will not be able to find us. But when they got there and they got into the, into the jungle, something strange happened. Something so strange that it's only mentioned one time in the Word of God. When they got there, the Bible says that the woods began to devour this army. When they got in there, it seems, and by the way, the word devour means this, to rapidly consume. In other words, it seems as though when they entered into this jungle area that the scorpions and the spiders and the animals and the trees and the vines all began to attack this great army. And when it was over and done with, those woods, that jungle, and the creatures that were in there destroyed more people, more soldiers than David's mighty army did. What a crazy thought. What an incredible thought that they would be swarmed by spiders and snakes and scorpions and vines would have dropped down and wrapped them up and picked them up off the ground and the trees would have wrapped them up and picked them up off the ground. Uh, what a crazy thought. But I believe the Bible, don't you? And I believe that's exactly what happened. And when I read that, I thought, my goodness, what a picture of the world that we're living in today. What a picture of the world we're living in today. When I was growing up, they used to have a saying, and maybe some of y'all heard this. I know you adults have. That, uh, they would oftentimes say, it's a jungle out there. How many of y'all ever heard that saying before? It's a jungle out there. Basically what they were saying is when you leave your mommy and your daddy's home and you go out into this world, there are a lot of things out there that want to destroy and devour your home, your life, your bodies, your minds, and your hearts. It's a jungle out there. When you leave the comfort of this church tonight, when you leave the safety of this church tonight, you're going to go into a world that does not want to treat you right. It does not want to do you right. It wants to devour you and destroy you and to take your life and ruin it if you allow it to do so. Wow. I don't know about you parents, but as a pastor, I am sick and tired of seeing the devil ruin the lives yep. of these precious oh, kids that are here. Man. I am tired of reading on the news about 12-year-olds committing suicide. I'm tired of reading about church shootings and school shootings and all those things that are out there. I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired yeah. of seeing the devil destroy the lives of these young ones. Man. But I'm going to be honest and be real with you tonight, kids. It is a jungle out there. And when you go out of this building, if you don't have what you need, then your life will be destroyed before it's over with. Now, I'm going to give you three quick points, and I want you to just, just to pay real close attention because this is so serious tonight. And I believe there are most of you from this age all the way back on both sides can relate to what I'm about to say. I want to say this, number one, we are living in a jungle. Yeah. Amen. We are living in a jungle. The Bible says in 1 John 5 and 19, the whole world lieth in wickedness. Yeah. When you leave this building, you're not going into a godly environment. You're going into a godless environment. Right. You're not going into a wonderful environment. You're going out into a wicked environment. Yeah. You're not going into a sweet environment. You're going into a satanic environment. You're not going into an environment delight, but it's full of demons and devils of hell. Amen. This world lieth in wickedness. It is a jungle that we live in. That's right, man. And if you're not careful, there's some things that will devour you. Right. Number one, drugs will devour you. Amen. All the people that have lived in Lee County more than a year ought to be saying amen. amen. How many of you have had somebody in your family or a friend of yours that has been touched by the terrible scourge of drugs. Raise your hand up. 
Now look around. Hold your hand up. Kids, look around here. That is the type of environment we're living in. It is a jungle out there. And drugs will destroy your life. But I'm going to tell you what. When you read the statistics across America, it is absolutely startling what drugs is doing to our nation. And by the way, we're living in the last days today. And the Bible says explicitly that in the last days there will be sorceries. And that word sorceries is the word pharmakia, which means drugs. This world will be overrun by drugs. And it's destroying the lives of people. 64,000 people die every year because of drugs. 60. 4,000. I guarantee you from last vacation Bible school till this one that there have been at least four to five people that have suffered drug related deaths in this county alone. Amen? Amen. Amen. You know what the devil's done, kids? He's made drugs look cool. Especially for that age group back there. He's made drugs look cool. Well, you're cool if you go out and you get high. You're cool if you're a dealer. You're cool if you can drop your pants down and turn your hat sideways and walk around with your chains on and act like you're living the thug life. Well, let me ask you a question. How cool is it when your teeth fall out? How cool is it when you go to jail? How cool is it whenever your life is completely ruined and your mind is gone because of drugs? It is not cool. But drugs will devour you. Let me say something else too. Drinking will devour you. Amen. Drinking will devour you. Here, here's the crazy part. Now I want y'all to listen to this. We always focus and talk about the dangers of drugs. How come we don't ever talk about the dangers of drinking? Come on. Come on. Do you realize I just said 64,000 people died of drug-related deaths in one year on average here in this country? Guess how many die from drinking-related deaths? 88 thousand how come we're not we're not trying to get rid of drinking listen uh, i'll tell you this it, it's made it real cool the devil's made it real cool to drink and especially when you get in high school when well, you just go to that party and you just drink a little bit and everything is going to be all right you'll be cool and everybody's going to think you're the greatest thing in the world let me ask you a question how cool is it whenever you get in that car wreck and your body's all mangled up how when you run into somebody and you kill a little family with some little kids in it. How cool is it whenever you wake up in your own vomit and you don't even know where you're at? Listen, drinking will devour you. Amen. Dirtiness will devour you. Dirtiness will devour you. Three things dealing with dirtiness. And I'm going to be very clean so parents don't worry about this at all. But number one is perversion. The old devil's made homosexuality look cool. Number two is pornography. I'll tell you there are more people that are exposed to pornography at an early age than ever before in the history of this world. Kids this age right here, I guarantee you in this group right here and in this group over here, there is somebody here that has been exposed to pornography at some point. Let me tell you how the devil does this. Everybody's got a, a cell phone. How many of y'all got a cell phone today? Raise your hand up if you got a cell phone. All right? If you, uh, uh, this is what they'll do. You get to school, you got your little cell phone on you. Somebody says, hey, watch this. And you look over and you see that mess. And then the devil begins to hook you into it. Or you're looking up and surfing the web and looking for stuff, and the devil puts something like that out there for you. They have uh, said this or described pornography as spiritual crack cocaine. Once you are exposed to it, it is exceedingly difficult to be able to quit looking at it. Now, I'm going to tell you, parents, we better guard the eyes and the ears of our children as though we are guarding their very lives because that may be exactly what we're doing. Amen. Perversion, pornography, premarital relations have been made cool by the devil. And our country is overrun with little teenage girls that are 
13 and 14 years old that are birthing children in this world when they're still children themselves. Right. And we've made this thing cool and we've made it acceptable to be uh, 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 like that in this world. Well, uh, you know, they're going to sow their wild oats and they're going to do this and they're going to do that. The Bible says in marriage the bed is undefiled, but adulterers and whoremongers, God will judge. Amen. And let me tell you, God Amen. will judge you for that. Right. He will. I, 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 I know how this thing works. Now, you listen to me, especially with you girls. You got some little dirty-minded boy that Snapchats or Facegrams you or whatever you call it stuff or Insta, whatever it is. And they, they'll, they'll start to talk to you. What's your name? How many of y'all ever had somebody ask you what your name was? Huh? If they don't know what your name is, then what the heck are they doing texting you? Come on. Huh? It's called fishing is what they're doing. They're, they're fishing for you. And then once they begin to ask you what your name is, they'll start to say something like this. Send me a picture. <clears throat> Send me a picture. <laughs> Can I give y'all some advice? If any little boy or whatever he happens to be asks y'all for a picture, I dare you, and I'm going to give you permission as your pastor to go find your dog, pull his tail up, <laughs> snap you a picture of that, Tying in of that dog and you send it to him. Amen. Because I can tell you tonight, they are up to no good when they do that, and you better turn them away, and you better cut them off, or they're coming after you. Dirty. Dirty minded, filthy, probably been exposed to stuff themselves, and they're trying to get you involved in it. Are you with me tonight? Amen. It's a jungle out there. We're living in a jungle today that's filled with that. How about death today? How many mass shootings have we seen? How many times have we seen and turned on the news and, and watched parents cry because their kids have been all shot up in a school or, or watched some pastor heartbroken because their church has been shot up? Deaths all over this country. 20,000 murders every year on average. In the United States of America, the safest country on this planet. I'll tell you something else. There's another thing that I believe is, is, is just as alarming is depression. Right. We've got kids this age, this age right here, that are so depressed yep. that they have thought about taking their own lives. Sure. And I bet you there's adults in this room tonight that have been so depressed that they have thought about taking their own lives. Do you realize there's over 30,000 suicides in the United States of America every year? And get this, and 5,000 of them are between the ages of 10 and 14 years old. I don't know about you, but when I was 10 to 14 years old, the last thing on my mind was taking my life. There is a demonic attack on these kids today unlike there's ever been before. This world is a jungle, and it will destroy you. It will take your life. It will com consume you just like the woods consume these people here in this passage of Scripture. And then there's doubt. Now listen to this, and this may not mean much to you, but it'll mean a lot to the adults, but listen to me real quick. Satanism and atheism are on the rise to the point today to where nobody hardly even wants to go to a church anymore. Across, now listen, across America, Amen. Brother Tony, you, you'll appreciate this. Across America, there are 5,000 churches that shut their doors every year because nobody wants to come to them anymore. Now I don't know about you, but I still have a Bible that says not to forsake the assembling of yourselves as the manner of some is. I still got a Bible that commands you to come and to worship the Lord. And kids, if your parents have to make you come to church, the problem is with you, not with your parents. Let me tell you something. I tell you this. We've got this, this crazy thought in our head. If we make our kids come to church, we're going to turn them against church. But yet we make them go to school, and they don't turn against school. And we make them go to Walmart, and they don't turn against Walmart. And we make them go to the dentist, and they don't turn against the dentist. The devil has ruined our minds today. We're nuts. Absolutely nuts. We're living in a jungle. 
I could tell you in the 46 years I've been on this earth, I could tell you so many heartbreaking stories that would make your head spin, many of which I can't even really repeat the details of, of kids just like you that got messed up. We're living in a jungle. Number two, I want you to think about this. Whenever I say jungle, if I was to say this, and I'm going to ask you kids, king of the jungle, what animal do you think of? A lion. A lion. Exactly. So, number two, not only are we living in a jungle, there's a lion in the jungle. Come on. The Bible says <laughs> The Bible says this. It says, The God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel should shine unto them. Amen. You say, who is the God of this world? 1 Peter 5 and 8 says this. The devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Listen, there is a roaring lion in the jungle we're living in that wants to destroy your life and drag your soul into hell. Amen. And he'll do it. Now let me tell you something. He don't want to just destroy. We, we, we think because we're saved tonight, he's not after us. Oh, he's after you. He's after the saved. He's after the sinner. Let me tell you how he'll destroy your life if you're saved. Number one, he does it through rebellion. He'll get you to rebel against the word of God. He'll get you to rebel against the house of God. He'll get you to rebel against everything that deals with God to the point to where you don't want to come to church anymore. And boy, he's real subtle about it. He knows when you're young and you're tender that you don't have any problem coming to church. Oh, but when you get a little bit older like this group back here, it won't be long before he puts one thing in your life after another. And before long, it seems like that everything's more important than church. And then finally, you're not coming to church anymore. And when somebody says, hey, you need to get back in church, you bristle up and you bow up and you say, oh, no, I'll go to church. I, I can worship at home just as good as I can worship anywhere else. I still pray, preacher, and all those kinds of things. He'll get you to rebel against the Word of God. Right. And before long, you don't care nothing about that book no more. Yeah. You don't care nothing about the Bible anymore. You don't care nothing about living for God anymore. He'll get you to rebel and he will destroy your life, saved person. You mark my word. I have watched too many people and I'm sick of it. Leave Lee County, Virginia, go off to some college and come back so messed up they don't even know who they are or what they believe anymore. I'll tell you what he's got. He's got you to rebel. Yeah, amen. He's got you to rebel. And then number two for saved people, he'll get you through relationships. He'll slide some girl up that's full of the devil, but you're so starstruck by how she looks and how beautiful she is and what a wonderful looking girl she is that you never stop to think whether she's full of the devil or not. Or he'll slide some boy up to one of you young girls here that have loved the Lord and loved being in the house of God and loved the things of God and cherish your purity and slide that boy up and then all of a sudden you get starstruck with them and before you know it, they have drug you away from the things of God. They have drug your heart away from loving God. They have taken you out of the will of God and your life will be a wreck. Let me tell you how to gauge that thing. If they, if they act like they like you and you start hanging around with them and they're trying to keep you out of church, they ain't for you. Right. I'll tell you, God didn't send them. The devil, the, the devil himself sent them to you. Right. If, they are, if you are in church less after you meet somebody than you were before, they ain't for you. Amen. And you need to get rid of them. Because I can promise you, God Almighty didn't send them to you. The devil did. The devil, listen, God will never send you anybody that will drag you out of church and drag you out of the teen choir and drag you out of the youth group and drag you out of the house of God to where you barely ever show up again. God will not send anybody like that to you. And if he has, listen, if there's somebody like that in your life, the best advice I could ever give you is say this. You either get in the house of God with me every time the doors are open or you get out of my life because I will not sacrifice my relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. for somebody like you. Amen. And, and, and I'm just trying to be real with you tonight because I promise you I know where that's going. But then what about the sinners? What about you that are lost tonight? What does he do to try to devour you? What is that lion going to do to come after you and try to grab a hold of your heart and drag your soul into hell? Well, there's two things for you too. Number one, 
He'll do it through religion. Religion oftentimes is associated with salvation when in reality religion probably sent more people to hell than any other thing I could think of. And, and you know what? And, and kids, look up here at me. Don't check out on me. Now look, the other night when we were asking questions about what does baptism mean and things like that, I was taken back, and I don't fault you. I just think of the, the it, it's oftentimes just what you hear. But I was taken back by how many of you thought baptism saved you. People, they, they, they were asking, what is uh, Mr. Tyler was asking, what does baptism do? What is, ba what is baptism for? And there were people that said, it washes away your sins. No, 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 no. The Bible says the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all our sin. Amen. From A-L-L, -L, all sin. You can't get washed from your sin in water or you'd be clean from your sin every time you took a shower. Amen? Amen. It's the blood of Jesus Christ that cleans you up. Amen. Okay, so, it's, so you got to watch religion. You need, to, you need to know not about religion so much as you do about a relationship. Have you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Have you accepted Him and taken Him as your Lord and Savior? Do you have that personal relationship with Jesus Christ? It doesn't matter what, what church role your name's on. I'm not one of these that believes that only Baptists are going to be in heaven. i got my doubts about a lot of them, to be honest with you. Amen. <laughs> I, I, I believe this. It doesn't matter what denomination you are. If you have received Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, if you have come and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and asked Him to save your soul from hell, then thank God you're going to heaven. Amen. But that's not religion. It does not matter what role your name is on. It does not matter how many times you've been baptized. It does not matter what kind of good works you've done. It does not matter uh, what kind of righteousness you may have and morality in your life. What matters is what you've done with Jesus Christ. Yeah. And many people have him up here, but they don't have him in here. Right. They know about him, but they don't know him. I know about Donald Trump, but I don't know Donald Trump. Right. Amen? And some of y'all know about Jesus Christ, but you don't know him as your Lord and Savior. And that's the problem. Amen. That's why you lay your head down. You're miserable every night. That's why you're worried all the time. That's why you don't know where you're going when you die. Because you have never had the personal relationship with Jesus Christ. You've got a head knowledge, but you don't have a heart salvation. So it's not religion, but he'll get you with religion. And then he'll get you with rejection. He'll get some of y'all just to say no. So I'm going to give an invitation here in a minute, and I'm, I'm going to be real with you. If you know you need to be saved and God's been dealing with you, whether you're an adult or a child or teenager or whatever, and you walk out of this building and say, not today, you know what you've done? You have rejected Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Oh, amen. You have to make a decision tonight. Yeah. You have to. And if you walk away without Christ as your Lord and Savior, you've made your decision tonight. Right. Now, he may be gracious enough to give you another opportunity. But I will tell you this. He does not have to. Right. And so you leave out of here tonight without Christ as your Lord and Savior. No matter who you are, you have rejected him. You have said no to the greatest thing that could ever be in your life. Amen. And the Bible says this in Hebrews 10 and 29. How sore punishment be thought worthy for those who have trodden underfoot the Son of God. When you walk out that door without Jesus Christ, instead of walking out of this altar to accept Him, you are stepping all over the very Son of God, walking over Him like He is some kind of a doormat that you can brush your dirty little sinful feet off on. And in reality, God takes note of that. He sent His Son to die for you. He sent His Amen. Son to shed His blood for you. Amen. He sent His Son so that you would not have to go to hell. Amen. And listen and listen good. If you walk out without Him, you are slapping the very Son of God in the face. When you leave this building without Jesus Christ, you're walking right over. And that's what He'll get you. I want to give you one final thing. I like this now because... What I've told you is not good. But if you've known me very long, we're going to make it good now. Amen. Amen. Because not only are we living in a jungle, and not only is there a lion in the jungle, but thank God there's a Lord that is over the jungle. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 24 and 1, 
It says the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Amen. I don't know about you tonight, but I thank God even though we're living in a jungle. I thank God even though there's a lion in the jungle that there is a Lord over the jungle and there's a Lord that's over that lion. I thank God today that I've got a Savior and it's none other than Jesus Christ Himself. He is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Thank God. Thank God. There's a Lord that is over the jungle. I want you to know tonight, you listen, I'm about done. I want you to know tonight that the Lord over the jungle has power to save any sinner that may be in the jungle. That's right. I'm glad to know tonight there is nobody that is outside of the reach of the saving hand of Jesus Christ. It does not matter how far in sin you may be. It does not matter what you've done. It does not matter what your last name is. It does not matter where you've been. Hey, i got good news for you tonight. There is a Savior that can save any sinner that's here. Thank God tonight that if you'll come to Him, put your faith and trust in Him, the blood of Jesus Christ will wash your sin. How do you get to him tonight? The Bible says this. It says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It says the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord, thank God, shall be saved. Hey, I've got good news. He's got power to save any sinner. And I'll tell you something else. There's a Lord of the jungle that not only has power to save any sinner, but he has power to protect any saint. Yeah. You, want, you want to know what you need when you leave here tonight if you're saved. Now let me just say this. I thank God for our military. Yep. I thank God for our policemen and our, and our folks that work in law enforcement. I thank God for those that keep us safe. But do you understand tonight that they cannot be with you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week? That when you leave here, not even your mamas and daddies can always be with you. Now listen, I would love to have a policeman that went around with me or a Navy SEAL that escorted me everywhere that I went. But I want you to know that's not possible and that's not feasible. But I sure am glad to know that I've got a Savior in Jesus Christ that said I'll never leave you nor forsake you. He is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. I sure thank God tonight that I've got a Savior that will go with me every step of the way. And when you're out there in that jungle, you must understand that even though you're out there, that if you're saved, you've got a Savior that is with you. I thank God for that tonight. I've been in a lot of bad situations. I'm sure many of you in here have as well. But I've had a God with me every step of the way. But then number three, I thank God. Not only does He have the power to save any sinner, and not only does He have the power to protect any saint, but he also fi uh, finally has the power over Satan himself. Amen. Amen. Oh, he's got power. Power, wonder-working power. Yeah. Listen, the devil may roar at you as a roaring lion, but I've got a righteous lion that war roars louder than him. Yeah. He may be a lion. The devil may be a lion that tries to attack you, but I've got a lion that is for you and that is almighty over that devil. Hey, I sure thank God tonight that I've got a God that's already whooped the devil. Amen. And he tells me one day uh, he'll be cast into the yeah. lake of fire yeah. and he'll never bother you and I again. Yeah. Thank God today uh, that I've got a God and a Savior and a Lord that is over that job. Right. Yeah. Years ago, there was a little girl about 12 years old in Africa that got saved under the preaching of a missionary in a little camp in Africa, much like, you know, a vacation Bible school like you guys have been a part of. And this little girl got saved and loved God. She was in a very, very bad part of Africa, a very dangerous part of Africa, still dangerous today as a matter of fact. There were a lot of the, uh, the, the, the radical Muslim group that, that's still in that area today would come in and raid these little villages and steal these little girls like you. 
and would take them off and use them as slaves. And one day this girl, she was in her little village, she was helping her mama, and these men, these terrible men came in with guns and began to shoot all of the adults in that village and began to take all of the little girls, tie them up, put them in a group, and this one girl, she saw what was happening. And her mama said this, her mama said, Honey, you've got to run. You've got to run. You run in that jungle. You run as far as you can. And don't you stop. And that girl took off out of that hut. And a couple of men saw her. And they shot her mom and they shot her dad. And they began to chase her out through that jungle. And they ran and ran after her. And she ran as hard as she could. And she never would look back. But she ran so long and so hard that she collapsed and passed out. She absolutely exhausted herself to where she literally fell over and passed out. When she woke up, she looked, and there were five lions that were surrounding her. But get this. <laughs> As she was running into the jungle, she had cried out to the God that saved her, Jesus Christ, and said, Oh God, help me God, help me God. He heard her cry. When she woke up, they were not facing her. They were facing away from her. Now, if you know anything about lions, I had to do a little research on this. This was an amazing story. Lions will only turn their back on you if they have been commanded by the head of the pride to protect you. Every one of those lions had their back to that little girl. She was in the middle, and there were five lions that were turned out, and those men came running into that area, into that opening, and there that little girl was surrounded by five lions facing away from her, protecting her. Those men couldn't get near her. Every time one of them would try to approach, that lion would roar. they go around the other side, that lion would roar and take a couple steps, and finally, they had to leave that little girl alone. When that girl was safe, those lions left. And within an hour, there was a missionary that went, had gone looking for her, that found her, and brought her back safe. Amen. I don't know about you, but that is no coincidence. We've got a Lord that is over the jungle. Amen. And I, I, I'm so glad today that I've got a God that knows who you are Amen. and knows what you're going through and knows what you're doing and knows where you've been. And thank God if He's the Lord of your life, He can take care of you as well. It's a jungle out there. But thank God we've got a Lord over the jungle. As you're standing to your feet right now, heads bowed, eyes closed, everybody looking around. Right now, you raised your hand. You're not 100% sure you're safe tonight. You begin to hug. Right now, kids, you raised your hand. Adults raised your hand.